Today I want to focus on a recently completed project Anderson Bell Christie has just completed for the Ganaki Trust. It's an intergenerational new neighbourhood for rent that's accessible and affordable. The Trust owns the Ganaki estate, which is an estate in the original sense of the word. The Trust manages an area that includes housing for rent, agricultural land and parkland. And we were asked to look at a site for new housing and that's the red dot on the map. So the first thing we did was to prepare a master plan using a co-design process. We worked with people that lived and worked in the area to find ways to integrate new and, housing, new and existing housing neighbourhoods, both physically and socially. This is the original housing estate constructed in 1923. It's continuing to provide high quality housing for affordable rent, mostly larger family homes and separate sheltered housing, all focused around some beautiful, really high quality green spaces. The Trust photographed the construction of the original estate, and this slide shows the huge difference that the well-maintained landscape setting makes, in particular the beech hedges and mature trees. Part of the master plan process was a housing needs survey, and this highlighted an older population living in the Ganaki Trust area, mostly living in hard to adapt family homes or standalone sheltered housing. Around 60% of households were over 55. There's relatively few young families. The existing homes weren't easy to adapt or extend without significantly altering the very special character of the estate and people really like living there and they don't want to move. So we ended up with a series of design principles developed from the master plan. We needed a lifetime intergenerational neighbourhood where homes for all ages and abilities where people want to move and would enjoy living together. A green infrastructure with these sociable green spaces that were so important for mobility and well-being. Healthy homes that are flexible, affordable to heat and that have good air quality. A new housing neighbourhood is designed to support an intergenerational community which is accessible to everyone and nurtures a sense of ageing well. This is the existing housing estate and we can see that all the original homes are oriented on a southwest grid. This is the early use of solar gain and so we've taken this idea and made sure that all new homes are oriented similarly. I've been involved in some research with Scottish academics, which has suggested that getting outside is a really significant factor for older people's mobility and health. So we've designed, we wanted to design an environment that makes it easy and enjoyable to go outdoors. So we knew we wanted to use some of the important landscape elements of the previous estate, not just because they worked aesthetically, but because they would have a positive psychological benefit for residents. This wee sketch shows the existing housing. We based our design for new homes on the best element of their older neighbours, the same distinctive hip roofs and simple massing and proportions, beach hedges, screen driveway parking. In addition to retaining these good qualities, we wanted to create accessible, sociable spaces between new homes. And these sketches show the kinds of spaces we were looking for, balancing privacy and sociability with a wide range of outdoor uses. Following on from some work with dementia sufferers and their carers that we did, we were particularly interested in designing spaces that offer different degrees of sociability, giving people a range of experiences from sitting at their front door and just observing what's going on through to enjoying an activity in a shared space that others have an opportunity to watch. We ended up with some key objectives that are illustrated in this diagram. The main access road showing in beige has been designed with a maximum width of three and a half metres with lay-by passing places. And this has resulted in a reduction in vehicle speeds in the new housing area. We've used pavements and roads rather than shared surfaces because this makes the area easier to negotiate for people with perceptual and visual difficulties. These green rectangles show central community spaces that are the main arteries for pedestrian movement. And we want these also to be the location for spaces and activities that encourage outdoor life to develop and prevent social isolation. Each new home also has a covered outdoor space with direct access from the living room. And we've called these a situtori, 
a roof provides cover so that it's possible to be comfortable sitting outside even when the weather isn't that great. Here's one of the shared spaces which we really want to be the main pedestrian connections and the social spaces and the green spaces around about them are currently under construction and being developed with input from the tenants. Here's this image really hopefully captures this idea of landscape mediating between private spaces and more public spaces, giving a degree of privacy, but also allowing a degree of observation and interaction. And here's one of the sutritories. The residents have furnished the sutritories with a fabulous range of different types of patio furniture. I think everyone has, has really colonized these spaces and is using them really, really well. I think particularly um, because at the moment, because of the coronavirus uh, pandemic, being outdoors and getting that social contact outdoors is becoming more and more important. In terms of the individual house designs, um, most of the houses that, that we've provided are flexible two bedroom bungalows. They're designed to suit people with a range of abilities, older people downsizing, people with physical and perceptual impairments, people with a live in carer, as well as younger smaller families. And there's also some larger fam uh, homes for families who have a family member who uses a wheelchair. We mocked up bedrooms and bathrooms to test the viability for people with diet disabilities and there's enhanced levels of daylight in all rooms to suit residents who may develop dementia. New homes are energy efficient and sustainable and they're based on a fabric first approach maximizing eco-friendly insulation and air tightness using a prefabricated timber panel structural system. A.K. Bell, the owner of Bell's Whiskey and the person that set up the trust and constructed the houses in the 1920s, invested in good ventilation to the, all of the original dwellings. He insisted that this plaque was um, uh, put into the hall of every new home uh, in the 20s. And it says, ventilation means health. No house is healthy unless it's ventilated. No room can be ventilated unless the top sash of the window is open. Better spend money on extra bed clothes than sleep with the top sash closed and the money go to the doctor. Well, we've developed a more modern approach to healthy ventilation based on Anderson Bell Christie's research into indoor air quality with Glasgow School of Art. It uses a stack ventilation system that provides secure nighttime ventilation controlled by sensors in the house and this contributes to creating great indoor air, internal air quality. We're going to monitor this to make sure that we've got it right for, an, for another two years in eight of the new homes. So what have we aimed at and hopefully achieved? New houses, spaces and streets that are integrated with the existing housing neighbourhood. We want residents to be comfortable moving from larger existing homes into newer homes that suit them better so that the space for larger families, new families and older residents and people with a range of different abilities. We want the new homes to be healthy, accessible homes for affordable rent that are suitable for a wide range of ages and abilities who are living comfortably beside each other. And we want a place where people are encouraged to enjoy being outdoors. This is especially relevant at the moment. And finally, I think this image helps to capture what we were trying to do. It was taken when the original estate was completed and some of the people living here today are the descendants of the workmen in the photo. The continued success of the Ganaki estate is not just because of the architecture. What's equally, if not more important, is the ongoing care of the green space and landscape by the trust and the involvement and sense of community that tenants have in their neighbourhood.